Today, we are lucky enough to be one of the first to get our hands on a new DT Swiss. They call it the DEG, as in for degrees, and it looks remarkably similar to their other models. But the one that we're interested in today is this one. So the big news here is that the DT Swiss ratchet system, and I'll show you these other designs in a minute so you can kind of understand how all these different hubs function to make a, a decision as to which one's gonna suit you the most. But this one has now come with just four degrees of engagement and DT Swiss have put loads of effort into massively improving the degrees. And this is such a fine point of engagement. This is comparable to things like Industry 9 Hydra hubs, some of the halos, it is really, really fine, but it's still using the DT Swiss legendary ratchet system. So this is really for mountain biking use. The idea is that you get sort of instantaneous engagement. And ironically, DT Swiss have always been fairly defensive over their points of engagement on their 350s because of the suspension backlash problem. Now, modern suspension designs have almost tuned that all out, but you still have the the DT Swiss 350 and lots of other designs from other people. And this is a trend that we're actually seeing from a lot of brands. Hope quite recently with their new Hope Pro 5s also increased the points of engagement. So as suspension pivot design has been improving, the, um, the need, if you like, for higher points of engagement on our hubs has also increased. So let's get into this. Let's pull this apart and see the changes. Now, the end caps they use are the same end caps as the rest of their range, which is nice to see, but the free hub bodies have definitely changed. And the very first thing we see is this significantly bigger ratchet drive. Now, just to show you guys, there we go. You can see a significantly bigger ratchet. There is the new DEG. Here is uh, an old sort of style 350. Now, this is the style that you're starting to see a lot of the Chinese brands copy now because the patent on this has run out. So you're starting to see this in things like nine velo wheels, for instance. Um, and this one here is the, the current 240, ever slightly evolution of a design with higher points of engagement, but still nowhere near the incredibly fine teeth profile of this ratchet and significantly bigger. Now, I think a lot of mechanics out there will be going, oh, but what about access to the bearing? Yes, because the very first thing you'll notice is that the, the main bearing here is no longer hidden behind that ratchet. So you no longer need a bigger tool or a special tool, sorry, to get in there and remove before you can get access to the bearings, which is which is really, really good news. Let's just get this out. So it looks to me like these two ratchets are absolutely identical, just like on the old 350s, etc. cetera, they, they are identical. So are the two springs, absolutely identical. So I don't think you have any problems getting that the wrong way around. So this is the free hub. This is the, uh, the micro spline version. You can see it's got much bigger diameter around here. Still uses those relatively small bearings, uh, sadly, but that's quite um, common now. And I'll show you some other designs of bearings to see this 6803, I think it is design. Unfortunately, these are gonna require a different free hub body. You can't use the free hub body from the 240s or the 350s like you used to and interchange them. This is gonna be proprietary to the DEG system. So behind here, we have a little steel washer. Now, this is somewhat unusual for DT Swiss. We don't normally see uh, a washer in there trying to separate these two things. And this washer is important because this is what's going to separate the two bearing surfaces between here and here, so these bearings don't bind against each other. Not a massive fan of this because what we can see is if this bearing does start to break down, if you like, and you get some bearing wobble, then this can become jammed up and actually dig into the axle. Something that we see Hope and Bitex and Novatec hubs and stuff really suffer from. In fact, I think we've shown you uh, some Hunt wheels that suffer the same thing. So. I guess time will tell us whether that causes a problem, but it would have been nice if it didn't have it like their other designs do. Right, let's knock these bearings out and see what else we can see in here. It's just So this little tool here, by the way, is called a Hub Genie made by Junior, which is an insanely useful tool for removing hub caps, hub end caps, just pops off like that. Brilliant, so much better than trying to squeeze it off in a vise or something. Yeah, so these bearings are the 152627 bearings. Now they have a, a black seal on the inside, which is the, or the low contact seal. So you get less friction, if you like, from this side. And then on the red side here, this is a higher friction seal, the better weather sealing. So 
you get a quite a nice performing bearing. But again, these are interchangeable. And quite a lot of the hub manufacturers are switched to these because now we're switching to 12 millimeter, 15 mil through axles. The ISO bearings don't necessarily fit for lightweight cycling hubs. So using these 15, 26, seven bearings does limit your choice somewhat, not a massively so because there's still a massive variety of really good high quality bearings out there, but you might not be able to get exactly your favorite brand. So Enduro, for instance, do them, DT Swiss make their own. You just go on to like simplybearings.com, type this in, you'll find lots. You'll even find them on the Hanbini website um, listed under various SKF and NTN. Um, so I don't think you'll struggle to get hold of these. And again, if you really want some fancy bearings, things like ceramic speed, etc., all make bearings for this. So that's definitely not a particular issue anymore. Quick observations about the actual hub body itself. The center section is significantly fatter. These are both mounted by hubs, hence they've got the six bolt here. But all the actual distance to flange, the flange sizes, they are all virtually exactly the same as the old 240 here. So really all they've changed is how this whole construction works. So the center bearing is now slightly elevated, should be easy to knock out. In fact, to knock that bearing out, all you need to do is just pop the axle in here, give that a hit with a hammer and that'll come out really easily. And then just the bearing press will put all that back together again. Relatively straightforward job. So significantly easier to service, that is for sure, significantly more points of engagements. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to testing these. The one thing I am concerned about is probably dirt and muck ingress and how much that affects these really, really tiny um, ratchets. There is quite a good double lip seal here. So there is a rubber seal that runs all the way around here and actually interfaces with a little groove in here. So in terms of the labyrinth seal, uh, that all looks pretty good as well. Right. Let's just pop this back together and show you how sort of simple that is. Quick bear and press off camera, just push all that together and we are good to go. So for context, I think this video deserves a little bit of an evolution. If you're not familiar, this is the old 240 design, which has this section here. As you can see, it's got thread and this is threaded into the hub and you do actually need a special tool to remove that. So this one actually uses a, a red, aluminium spacer to space out the bearing. It's an easier tool to use than the lock ring tool on the 350, but it is still a, a special tool to use. Now, I still think this is a very, very nice road hub, um, but for mountain biking, I think it's definitely nice that those bearings are an awful lot easier to access and service. Now, this is the 350, which is probably the legendary hub and probably one you, all, you guys are most familiar with. So those are those two ratchet drives. This one's actually been used a fair bit in a wheel. These are the bits now that you're starting to see in all these Chinese wheels. That's that aluminium space, so see it's significantly wider. And if you can see here, it's this bearing here, it's actually behind this ring here. So, I mean, home mechanics will really, really struggle with this. Um, here in the workshop, we use um, a tool by Elevation Wheel Company, I think it is, and a big impact driver, and that just hauls that out really, really quickly. But that is probably the biggest criticism of the DT Hub system is access to that bearing. Now, it, as you can see, it's really well hidden. It's got, you know, a big, steel washer over the top of it and it's quite hard to get dirt all the way in there but uh, it can happen now for a bit of context about why this is so special i'm going to show you an industry nine hub now these work very similar to hope i've just removed the end cap from this already and you can see that this uses a much more traditional pool and pool spring and already those pools have gone everywhere here we go let me just pop these back in but you can see here there's a tiny tiny little spring um, and these can corrode now these industry nine ones use quite a nice profile of the actual pool so there's like two teeth on here and that's how you get those higher points of engagement and those engage on the ring drive now again you can see just like the hope ones you can get access to these bearings quite quickly so we don't do an awful lot of work with hope which is probably the other big name in the business i don't know why really it's just one of those things that our customers tend to ask us for things like this more than they do the hope system quite a lot of brands use this little pool spring system and it has its you know its pros and its cons its biggest con probably is those very small springs and bits and pieces that can kind of get clogged up and 
A Chris King hub operates in a very, very different way. So the Chris King hub works on a ring drive. So just in here, you can see these tooth pros profiles here, which are kind of in a helix configuration. And down here on the inside, you can see the helix. So as you pedal, this actually locks together even tighter. So the harder you pedal, if you like, the harder they lock together. It's a brilliant system and requires very, very little maintenance, just really cleaning and a bit of oil in there. You know, legendary quality and durability from the Chris King system. So how I sort of see this stack up is Industry 9, Hope, etc. These are great, you get good performance, they're nice and lightweight, but you've got to make sure you keep on top of your maintenance. The DT Swiss, I think you get a fantastic durable hub, easy availability of spares, and now with the new DEG system, even easier to maintain and you're still getting those high points of engagement and then right, right at the top end we get things like um, onyx hubs and chris king hubs which really do something quite special so this for me is like the sensible choice so like i said this was a first look video at the new d2 swiss deg hubs our next job is to go and build these into a wheel and give them a good test and see if we can notice a difference on all these points of engagement and more importantly see if we can get some mud in there and some dirt and really see if we can foul up the system and get it to fail but that's going to take me a few more weeks i hope you found this video useful if you've got any questions please get them down in the comments i'll answer as many as i can i know this is a very new product and yeah subscribe to the channel if you can and i look forward to reading what you have to say cheers